What is up? It's a figure hunter, and today we're going to do a review for the Garmin Index S2 Smart Scale. This puppy has been out for a little bit, a couple years now, and I have been using the Index Original for three years. So lots of data that we're going to be able to see in this review of the Index S2. And I got this because I had enough health points built up in my company's health insurance plan to get it for free. So I thought that's awesome as well as I recently had a DEXA scan done last week. So we're going to be able to test the accuracy of the scale and even show how you can input DEXA level accuracy into the scale to make it more accurate going forward. So if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. What are we going to talk about in this review? Now, obviously we're going to go over the specs, features, and details in summary for this particular scale. We're going to look at it side by side with the original index smart scale to see how it looks in size and overall picture and the you know the screen visibility we're going to see it in use and how it sort of scrolls through pieces of information we're going to review the accuracy as well as review how it displays data for each of the metrics it tracks over a long period of time and then all these we're going to continue to look at it alongside the index you know what the index one original data looked like versus the index two and compare and talk about the contrast of features now in the overview of the specs and features for the s2 smart scale it tracks a few basic things it tracks your weight obviously and your bmi which is not actually a very significantly difficult thing to track yourself it tracks your body fat percentage it tracks your skeletal muscle mass weight it tracks your bone mass weight and your body water percentage now, with any of these weight metrics, you can have it track in pounds, in kilograms, and in stones, whatever the heck stones are. One of the new features about the S2 Smart Scale is it has now a 1.2 bright color screen instead of the sort of two-tone monochromatic type screen that was on the Index Original. And it connects to Wi-Fi like the Index Original did, but that makes it useful because you step on the scale it uploads it to wi-fi it dumps it into garmin connect for you to review all your data you don't have to have your phone anywhere nearby in the box it comes with carpet pads if you are going to be taking measurements on carpet it try to increase the accuracy because it's really better to take it on a hard surface and it comes with your first set of batteries it requires four aaa batteries and four four aaa batteries can get you up to nine months which i think is a sweet deal you no need to try to get a scale that you have to plug into usb to recharge it you can do a number of different customization features that are new to the S2 smart scale over the original index scale. And you can add up to 16 users as long as they have a Garmin Connect account and as long as they are linked to your Garmin through a connection, you can add them and then they will have on their phone through the Wi-Fi connection all their stats so they can see over a long period of time. Now, to take the best measurements, it is best to use it on a hardwood floor. And it is definitely super important to take your measurements at the same time of day so that some of those internal components like water, body water percentage, are coming out somewhat consistently with how hydrated you are at whatever typical time of day. So I just recommend you take it first thing in the morning so that you're as dehydrated as possible. Your water hydration level is the same before you have a cup of co coffee or a glass of water so that everything stays the same because more than just the accuracy is being able to see the trend lines over a long period of time. And that's what we're going to talk about as we look at some of the data. So with that, let's look at the scales side by side and then dive into the rest. Okay, so looking at the two scales, you can obviously see a huge size difference between the 14 by 12 versus the 12 by 12. It's just a lot more slender. It's actually a little bit lighter. And if you were to just tap on each of them to try to get the screen to come up, you can see it's just a monochromatic i mean it's bright and clear to be able to see the letters or the numbers are bigger because it's a, a a bigger screen all around this is the 1.2 inch screen that comes on the new index s2 but it is a full color screen so you're going to see a lot more information if you were to look at them sort of over top of each other you can see that if you were to lay it across you basically had have you know lots of space around the sides that you know you're saving in overall space it's got nice little rounded edges versus the more squared off edges on the index s1 the original versus the index s2 just got a really nice sleek look to it and the color screen although it is a smaller screen than the original s1 it's still uh clear and easier to read because it has got better resolution and is a full color screen all right so you just tap on it once comes to life 
step on it, get the feet in the right position, your weight, and then you'll begin to scroll through, find the name, and it'll start to tell you your stats. Trend line, BMI, body fat percentage totally wrong, skeletal muscle mass, bone mass, water percentage, weather for the day. All right, so you get the basic summary of information on a daily basis whenever you do a weigh-in. You get your weight, percentage change, body mass index, body fat, skeletal muscle mass, bone mass, and uh, body water percentage. Now, there was a stark difference between how it calculated my body fat percentage after I transitioned to the index S2 from the original index smart scale. And we'll see that in a second. If you look at the body fat of 25.9%, that is very heavy. So if we look at how it looks at weight, obviously over trend. So this is index scale one to index scale two. Um, so you can see it's going to give you sort of your range, but at the same time, it's going to give you um, your weight, that's fine. Body mass index, just a calculation of weight divided by height, that's fine. But look at body fat. When I transitioned from the index scale one, which was given me in the 15s, to index scale two, which jumped me up to 26% on average. High 25, low 26. And drum roll please with what my body fat percentage was from a DEXA scan, 17.5%. So not correct at all. The index scale one had me low. Index scale two has me ridiculously high at 26.5%. How is it calculating for that? Well, it's not from the BMI. That's sort of this, you know, continual range. It's not really from the skeletal muscle mass. So that's about the same sort of average range from index one to index two scale. First measurement that has more of a felt drop is it's changing the amount of bone mass that's estimating for me to have. And the other major change is it's estimating the amount of percent body water to a much lower percentage. And that is the only, that and bone mass are the only major differentiating graphs, graphs that are creating this highly erroneous uh, body fat percentage. All right, so if you want to be able to set in the actual score you got from an outside institution, you would basically go into the user itself and go into user settings. Then you're going to set body composition, body fat 17.5, skeletal muscle mass we don't know, so we're just going to hit save. Okay, it's saved. Okay, look at it in greater detail. So, see the first way in today still had my, my body fat percentage, oh, sorry, first way in today had a body fat percentage at 26, and then after I did the manual entry to add the data from an outside DEXA scan, of 17.5, it adjusted my body fat percentage to 17.2. So this is great that you can make a manual adjustment. Obviously, the data is completely incorrect out of the gate. Um, so you can see all those are going to be the same. So there's the drop off in body fat percentage. And where is it uh, accounting for the increase in percentage? It's not really in skeletal muscle mass, or it's not at all in skeletal muscle mass. It's in bone mass. So you can see it took the data from 10 to 12. If we look at the DEXA scan, again, 10 or 12, my bone mass is actually 7.3. So 7.3 pounds. So neither one of these are accurate. And if you look at it as a percentage basis, they are highly inaccurate because they're a huge percentage different from 7.3 um, or 7.6, can't remember exactly. And then it's also attributing a change in water. So it's just sort of making up the difference with additional bone mass weight and percent body water weight. Um, so if anything, maybe from here, I'll be able to 
assess if there is any significant changes in body fat percentage and now that it's locked on to this outside scan. So the other question is, is can you make this kind of change with a manual addition to the index original scale? So would the index original scale still work to be able to take into account an outside scan input? And we can see on the index start smart scale, the original, you basically don't have any place where you can connect it to an updated information from outside. So you can't add your body fat percentage, so it won't realign with what you received from an outside scan. So you can't actually get the accuracy to improve. The other features that I would say are worth noting is that you can make adjustments to all the widgets that you see. So it's got a lot of good control aspects to what you see or don't see, track or don't track. You can change your name. The user setting is something somewhat basic. You can actually, and you want to pay attention to the activity class that you enter so that you're, it's properly aligned with what your activity level is so that it can take adjustments based on that. Um, general aspects, nothing great there, but you can add up to seven Wi-Fi networks and then manage users. You can add 16 total users, yourself and 15 others. They have to be on Garmin Connect and they have to be connected to your particular account for you to be able to add them. So it's all, you're like the master controller of everything, but the fact that you can add those 16 users makes it helpful. And the other really primary thing about it that I think is worthwhile is just the fact that you can see your trends over long periods of time. Now there was a little bit of adjustment here because of some setup, but you can see that I've been using it for a long period of time. There hasn't been other than this recent debacle with it, the new scale tracking a whole different body fat percentage and, you know, um, bone mass percentage and bone mass weight and body water percentage. But other than that, if you look at the consistency over a long period of time with even the index one, the original scale, it's actually, you know, the trend lines are really tight or they're really similar. I wasn't getting a lot of variance. Um, this was a later day measurement that I got just testing and playing with the new scale. So it um, otherwise is tracking it within a tight range of variables. So it's not showing a wild percentage difference day to day. So you will be able to see trends over a period of time. As you can see here, the you know, skeletal muscle mass increase over a period of time. So you can see trends and that does make it useful um, to be able to see direct trends over long periods of time without that added uncertainty of high level variance that it hasn't been reflecting for me uh, has not been much high level variance. what do i think of the garmin index s2 smart scale the first thing i would say that is a pro a, a positive aspect is that it has been super consistent i mean i'm using the old school index original and there has not been a lot of variation from one day to the next. And through that, I can see trends over time. So that is actually a powerful component when you're tracking your physiological makeup and you want to see a trend line over time. So it's not always most important that it tracks it perfectly accurate, but it shows, you know, not a wild variance between measurements. So you can see that trend line develop. If you're looking for it as the most accurate, obviously, as we saw in the body fat percentage, this is definitely not accurate out of the gate when it comes to your body fat percentage. So if you want to really make use of this and have it be as accurate going forward and have it accurate on those trend lines, you really do want to get some sort of outside measurement. Maybe it's one of the other biometric impedance type tracking uh, measurements or a DEXA scan is the best. I got mine for $99. It was actually a really, really worthwhile feature. It showed a lot of physical components that was really useful to me. And so if you add that outside and you update it to that more accurate component for body fat percentage, it makes some of the other things adjust and you can get a better trend line off a more accurate baseline. But that is probably the, you know, the other pro is that it helps you to have awareness of what parts of your body are changing over time, which helps you to make adjustments, whether if you want to build skeletal muscle mass to see that trend line going up, or if you want your body fat percentage to go down to see that trend line going down, even if it's starting at an inaccurate starting point. If you're a Garmin user, I would say probably in summary, I have really liked my index scale. I think I bought it used on eBay. And I felt like even though I didn't think the, you know, the physiological components were accurate, I felt like the the trend lines over time were, were actually worthwhile. And so I would probably say if you're a Garmin user, then that's a 
that's a more definite leaning towards this scale. I would try to look for it on sale for $100 or less. And I don't know how often that's possible or to look at it on eBay if you can get it for $100 or less. I'd say that's probably worth it because it is so solid. It is so consistent. It always does its thing. It always does the thing the same. So you don't have sort of that unreliability of a discount cheaper one. Although on the flip side, you could find a cheaper one to give you some basic as as aspects. Even if it is not accurate, again, you could see a trend line on some many lesser expensive scales. But I just really like the consistency and just the solidity of what I've had with the index original. So with that, that is the review for the Garmin Index S2 Smart Scale as it's also compared to the original index scaled and compared to a DEXA scan for body fat percentage accuracy. This is the Fit Gear Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.